Okay, I'm Keith Benedict. I'm an um, associate professor and the senior tutor in the School of Physics and Astronomy. Uh, I'm also curriculum officer um, and I'm on the University Quality and Standards Committee. Okay, so senior tutors, the role has changed a bit over the years. Originally it was kind of ill-defined and was very focused on how schools happen to operate their tutorial system. Now it's much more standardised. For us, there are, there are two, two sides to the tutorial system. One is very much focused on the academic side, which is that certainly in the first year we meet our students in groups of five every week. Uh, and we've carried on doing that, well, since I've been here, which is quite a while. Um, and we, we think it's important, obviously it's time consuming, but we think it's essential because the problem with, with lecture-based teaching is that it tends to be very one way. It's that you have you know, maybe up to 200, 220 students in the audience you can stand at the front and at the end and say, has anybody got any questions? And you know very rarely will anybody stick their hand up and say, yeah, I didn't get that. Some students will come up to you after a lecture and talk to you, but actually what we really want is to make sure that every student has got an opportunity to say, well, actually, I didn't quite get this bit, and to be able to get the answers that they specifically need. And, and we want to be brokering that sort of dialogue we want to have, as part of our course, places where students can sit in small groups, ask questions, get the help they specifically need themselves, but also start to learn to work as part of a group. The other side of it is the more pastoral side, which is kind of about making sure we're taking care of students, that they're thriving uh, and looking after students in terms of their academic development but also all the other stuff that goes on around being a student which sometimes impinges. So the university has this system whereby every student has a personal tutor who they meet at least three times a year one-to-one. -one. Uh, that's the point where they can talk about how how the work is going, how what things they're finding difficult, where they're really succeeding and they can get guidance on you know, how to improve, they can get feedback on performance in assessments, they can get guidance, well, certainly in the later years, on things like career development, what things they can be doing to make themselves look more attractive to employers. Um, and also, it's also the place where students can come along and say, well, actually things aren't going that well, and I need a bit of help, um, either on the academic side or with other stuff that's going on that's affecting how they're their life's going and is impinging on their studies. I think it's very different now. I think I had a kind of, well, a fairly normal undergraduate experience for the time in that I had a full grant. Uh, there was no question of any fees. There was you know, nobody knew anything about, you know, how that side of it was even funded. And I, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed my undergraduate time and it really didn't feel pressured you know, obviously there was kind of, there was a level of competitivity in that you wanted to do the best and you knew that at the end of the day you, you had to get a degree and if you wanted to do what I wanted to do, which was research, then you had to get a good degree and there was kind of pressure there, but it was kind of, you know, manageable and it was all focused on, well, how well you can, can you understand the physics and how well can you do it? Um, not all the other stuff that students have now. But on the other side, I think it has to be said that in those days, the job of academic staff in physics departments was very much research and they did some teaching and if the teaching worked effectively, that was a bonus. I was kind of a late developer mathematically. I was very weak at the beginning of my secondary school. I was terrible at maths uh, until I, I had a in about it's probably third year at school I had a very good maths teacher and once I had him it clicked and I kind of figured out how it, maths worked whereas before it just been this horrible mystery so and I think that helps because it kind of means I've got this sort of 
memory of how hard it can be when you just don't understand something and it's completely mysterious. But there was this kind of, you know, fairly brief period of time where this guy really just helped me put all the bits together in a different way so I understood how maths worked. So I kind of really enjoyed that from then on but I never felt that I'd wanted to just do maths for its own sake. I was always more interested in you know, what you could do with it, how you could use it to explain things um, in both chemistry and physics. And I think in the end I plumped for physics because I thought it was more fun. Oh, um, I've got a problem, can you help me? Or what, I don't know what to do. We have all system, lots of systems in place. I think many of them are tied up with making sure that we comply with lots of external requirements. And I think particularly now we tend to write things about the rules for the, the way the university works, the way we provide support in quite technical language. But I think that kind of takes away from a student who's in a difficult position who just wants to know what the hell they can do to get out of it. The thing that's happened in the last year about the extenuating circumstances process that uh, people have gone to look at what other universities do and taken some of those things and produced this rather nice website that's on the students union pages uh, which is much more you know user friendly and plain speak you know if you're in this position this is what you need to do and Okay, as simply as possible, and I think that's a big improvement. But I think it is, it's helping students find their way around the system and finding the bit of it that they need. So I, I first came here uh, for a summer school um, when the Low Dimensional Structures Initiative started and we first, the first MBE machine came here. And I, I liked the city and I liked the university as an environment uh, and then uh, I guess about four years later, there was a job advertised here, uh, which I came up for and didn't get. But they came back to me a couple of weeks later and said, well, actually, we've got this postdoc position and we could tie a lectureship onto the end of it. Uh, would you be interested in doing that? And I said, yeah, OK. I think what makes Nottingham physics special is that we do have this very collegiate atmosphere among the academics as well as the students that actually we're kind of there really isn't any backstabbing that people you know really are supportive of one another and also that we are very f concerned and think a lot about how we do research and how we do teaching